Hi, my name is Sharice Hodges, and you're watching Brown Book Series with Shea Baby. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's your girl Shea Baby with the Brown Book Series. And as I promised, oh my God, award winning author, Miss Sharice Hodges. Hi, Miss Sharice. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you for coming on and playing with us today. We're like, what? We get to talk to Miss Sharice? Yes. <laughs> I'm super excited. How you been? How are you? This whole pandemic, like, ah, uh, how has it been for you Ooh. being a writer? You know, trying to does it mess up with your creative juices? It did at first, like when everything was like just happening so fast because it was like, um, I'm in North Carolina, so it was like, no, it's not here. And then all of a sudden, it, it started was popping up because I live in Charlotte. So I was talking to a friend of mine before, you know, cases started happening in our area. And I was like, we need to go ahead and get ready because we live in a town with an international airport. And she's like, don't say that. Two days later, oh. first case of Corona. I was like, yeah, I'm staying in the house. Okay. <laughs> like, that I'm glad, like, cause my birthday was March 1st. So that was the last time I actually, Thank you. But that was the last time I actually went out, like sat down at a restaurant and I have no moms not going out and not being out in it because I have older parents and I don't want to take anything home to them when I go visit. I understand that. Are your parents in North Carolina as well? They're actually in South Carolina, which is a little scarier for me because South Carolina took a long time to close and opened up really quickly. My uh, parents, are, they're very sociable people. And I'm like, can y'all just like sit down and lock your doors? Go so let nobody in. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're Southern charmers. Like they're just, they're out doing their thing in the South, yeah. just having some time speaking to everybody. Yeah. Don't meet no strangers. Yeah. Don't meet no strangers. Oh my God. I love I'm it. Like, like, can y'all just stop? Like, can y'all <laughs> just, can everybody be a stranger if they don't have a mask and gloves on? Can just you stay 12 feet away from people? Just one, <laughs> just one time, mom and daddy, please. Right. So being yeah. a writer, though, the confinement of being home, um, does it mess this? I mean, does, did it mess with you as far as your writing goes? Like, were you were you able to still be as creative? But, you know, like, did it because I know some people who are um, confined at home, it messed up their productivity. They're like, Shay, I can't think. And I'm like, really? But I guess, you know, to each his own. How did it work for you being such a creative uh, being? Well, for me. I had a I have a problem right now writing contemporary. Oh. So it's like I had to create a whole new world just to write in. It's just a, a little a little town that I created and I don't know what's going to happen with the story. Is that something that's contracted? But that was how I just kind of, you know, kept my ebb and flow and as I was writing this story with the little town that I created that's like far away from, you know, everything that's really happening in the world right now. Right. Then I would think about the stories that, that I have to finish. Like in my Richardson sister series, I'm writing the third sister story. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so now you got to jump back into the reality of this story versus sitting up here in this little world by the beach that you just like so much. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Now, speaking of the Richardson uh, sisters, let me just say that dang on Nina. Um, <laughs> baby, Lena gave me life. I was like, yo, I'm I your books anyway are just awesome to me. Um oh, thank you. My, my favorite series for you uh, is, is the rumor, um, the rumor series. I think it rumor has it and the deadly rumor. And I was like, so do you like writing um series uh, um or do you like the standalone novels? It's a combination of both because I'm I'm a pantser. I'm okay. just starting to like plot stuff out. And with the series, you have to be like super careful. You got to plot everything out because if you forget a detail that you mentioned in a book, your readers are going to let you know. And you, that's the last thing that you want. So like writing a series is you have to like plot everything out and, and keep a Bible and all this good stuff. So I like a short series. Like I admire 
Brenda Jackson so much. Me too, girl. I love because, her. Because like her yeah. Westmoreland series, I don't know how she keep all of that stuff straight. <laughs> I love those books so much. Me too. I'm like, and as I looked at it, I, you know, I, I when I look at the series and, and think of it from a writer's perspective, I'm like, mm, I, I don't know if I can do all that. Yeah, it, <laughs> I wish you her Westmoreland series was just awesome. And then at the end, when it went into their friends, yes, I was like, girl, how you do that? I'm like, ooh, but I heard a, me. A, okay, now I know what a prancer and a uh, what a pantser and a plotter is. A plotter, yes. Yeah, I, I learned that from her. But <laughs> speaking of plotting and, and, uh-huh. and, and being creative, I had a rumor. I had a rumor that you were asleep one night and you had a dream <laughs> and you woke up as a romance novel, uh, a romance author. And I was like, what kind of dream was she having? Yeah, it, this is how I knew that this was a dream that was that meant something different. I wasn't even in it. What? I was Don't not even in it. So. It was like a, it was like a movie was playing in my head, and it was my first romance novel, Revelation. Yes, like um, the characters they were just doing their thing, and I'm like sitting on the sideline looking, and I was I woke up and I was like, okay, I got to write this down because you know you have these dreams, you don't write them down, you right. they're not coming back. Right. Exactly. So I started writing it, and uh, that turned into my first romance, which. I actually re-released as an ebook uh, earlier this month because it had never been in an ebook form because okay. that was way back in uh, the early two thousands before we knew what a Kindle was. Right. <laughs> right. Now I also heard it was hard for you to get your first novel published. It was. I mean, it was a struggle. Right. Um, back when I started writing, and. It's weird that I I get to say that because I still sometimes feel like I'm new at this. But back when I first started writing in in 2000, Mm -hmm. um, there were not a lot of houses that were looking for um, Black romance. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was was a full-time journalist at that time. Okay. Believe it or not, covering police and courts. So it was like well, uh, was wait, I'm sorry, side note. I believe it. Um <laughs> you know, I, I be reading Miss Simply Sharice. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, it. you and everybody else. Girl, yes. Okay, sorry, I just had to throw that side note in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it. But okay. um the romance was the escape, so it was like you know, there was a listserv of Black writers. Uh, I found my first agent, and there was this uh, publishing company. I'm not going to name it because it wasn't a great experience that did publish Black romance. And that's where I got my first contract. And my first um, five books were published through them. They are no longer in print in that company. But he is no longer in business. Mm-hmm. So I'm slowly kind of re-releasing them as ebooks. Okay. But um then in 2006, in the two well, mid-2006, I got my contract with Kensington. And mm-hmm. then the books were then my books were like distributed, had a wider distribution than with the first contract that I signed. So that's kind of that's with the trajectory of you know where where I got started and where I am now, which you know those first few years of sending out submissions, mm. there were so many scams, so many scammers. Oh my yeah, goodness! In, in book, yes, in book, yes, yes, yes. There was this one agency that I sent my um, sent my synopsis. First three chapters. Then they asked for the full manuscript. Send it out. I'm like, yes, this is about to happen. I get a letter back. Oh, well, we received your full manuscript, but we did not receive your check for blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? What? Y'all go ahead and send me my manuscript back. I'm like, (laughs) 
all the research that I've done, didn't nobody say you got to pay? <laughs> What did I want I mean, to pay for? They wanted, a, they wanted me to pay a reading fee, which oh. I don't know if that scam is still going on. But anytime like an agency asks you to pay a reading fee, it's like, yeah, y'all just want the money. Y'all not selling anything. Right. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Now, I know you were um, a journalist before you became a romance author. Did mm -hmm. how, When did you know that you wanted to be a writer? Like, when did you first realize that writing was your thing? Oh my gosh, when I was a kid and if I said something that was not true, it was a lie and you got a spanking. But yeah. if I wrote it down, it was a story that people were interested in. Wow. Oh, okay. So let me stop getting these spankings for <laughs> saying this stuff out loud and just write it down. <laughs> so it's something that I always wanted to do. Because my mom, growing up, she was a um, library assistant at the middle school in our town. Like, I'm from Bennettsville, South Carolina, super small. So she would always bring home books with the Black people on them. She brought me Maya Angelou. She brought me Motown and Dee Dee. And she also brought me the Boxcar Kids, which wasn't, it wasn't an um, African-American book or anything like that. It was just a fun book. Right. And I read it. And... You know, these kids were in the woods, they played on a boxcar, they ran away from home. I was like, man, if me and my friends did this, we would get the life beat out of us. <laughs> but I can write about us doing it and we could just read it. But the bad thing was I had the worst handwriting in the world. Uh -huh. So I had to come home and type my stories on a typewriter. I would pass my stories around in class. They're reading the stories. I'm doing my work so I don't have homework. So right. I can go home and write more stories and they're getting lunch detention and I'm getting good grades. That's what <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. So how long does it normally take you to write a book? Um, I would say first draft probably takes from three to six months. Um, the editing process is another like three to six. So basically a year. Mm -hmm. To go through the whole process of writing a book. Okay, so you was because girl, I was like I said, I was reading your books, and it seems like um, I was looking at the publication. They was dropping like every year. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, work, work for me though because I, you know, I have a lot of things to read. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> from every year, so I know I'm good for a book every year from her. <laughs> I try, I try, I be trying. Oh. I love it. I love it. So when you're not writing, though, like, what do you like to do when you're not writing? When I'm not writing, I like to watch superhero movies and read comics because I'm just I'm that nerd girl. I, I love that. I love spending time with my family. And when my nieces and nephews let me, I like to spend time with them because they're super grown now. Uh -huh. Used to be they, they waited for me to come home because I used to give them a dollar when they were like little kids now. Like now they're like almost 30. They're like, okay, what's up? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so you know we have to ask. This was so crazy because we asked Miss Miss Um Miss Bev this question. Miss Bev was doing this, and she was like, girl, I don't know. <laughs> How many books have you written? And which one is your favorite? Oh wow. Um, <laughs> I think I'm at 32 now. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, your favorite is always the one that you're writing next. But <laughs> if I had to pick one, I would say Tempted at Midnight is okay. probably my favorite. And why is that? Because I had so much fun writing that book and it was just, it was something, it was, I wrote about a midnight kiss on New Year's Eve mm. that turned into a whole relationship because it yeah. was supposed to be a one night stand. Mm -hmm. And it just, I don't know, it was just so much fun to write. I got a chance to kind of incorporate my love of soap operas in this book because it had family drama. Oh. It had like, you know, betrayal. It had, it was just so much, so much that I got to do with this book that was just so much fun to me. 
And I got to write about Black people in London. Yes. Oh, that's always hot. That's yeah. always hot. So you say your love of soap operas. What, what was your favorite soap opera? Oh, my gosh. Um, You know, growing up with a Black grandma, if you don't say Young and the Restless, something is wrong with you. <laughs> You know, I would like try to get sick so I could go stay with my grandma because we were going to watch Price is Right, Young yeah. and the Restless, uh, Old and the Beautiful, As the World Turns, and God in Light. Oh, and, yeah. <clears throat> and so then we, we might watch Oprah. Oh, y'all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you was a child of five girl. We was a child of two kids. Uh, all my children, One Life to Live, General Hospital. <laughs> we was. <laughs> We, we was all pissed. And then when yeah. I got older, I just fell in love with Victor Newman. And the yeah. rest of was just my thing. And I didn't realize that Victor Newman is like 500 years old. Because <laughs> he looked the same. Because he looked the same. And because like I said, I love like superheroes. I bought the um, original Wonder Woman series on DVD. Wow. You know Victor Newman in that? Girl, he, no. he was the fighter pilot. In the first season, I'm like, what? Okay, see, now I'm going to have to get that. Yeah, and then my daddy said that he was in a show, he was in some Western show that he watched when he was growing up. And I was like, I know how old you are, daddy, so. <laughs> so Victor Newman was on TV when you was a kid? Like, man. That he was got, he's a vampire. Yes, he's so sexy, though. That's a sexy old white man to me. You <laughs> I'm talking about to this day, I let Victor feel on me. I love <laughs> Okay, so uh, Sharice, before we get into your book, Owner of a Broken Heart, here at the Brown Book Series, we have, uh, you know, different segments. <laughs> okay. And one, <laughs> she's like, what's my dad? And one of our segments is called, uh, name that book. So what okay. we do is, yeah, we'll give you like either a character from the book or maybe like a line from the book and you have to name that book. Man, can I cheat with Google? No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, okay. You're gonna this. I'm telling you, you're going to get it. I have faith in you. You ready? All right. Okay. Name that book. And Bill Clinton never had sex with that woman. John Edwards was just hanging out with that videographer, and the baby wasn't his. Mm. Name that book. Oh my gosh! It's oh, if I get it wrong, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. Is it rumor has it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> rumor has it. Yes. Okay, you're doing good. This is awesome, right? Yeah. Right. This is an awesome game. You, you know, girl, rumor has it—that's my favorite book, honey. I let me just let me just be there. I just, I, yeah, I'm here for it, honey. I want to go and run for uh, a senator. <laughs> run for senator <laughs> <honey. laughs> okay, name that book. Character Selena Hart. Oh, that's just can't get enough. Yeah, she couldn't yeah. get enough either, honey. She was <laughs> yeah, she get enough. All right. Okay, look at you. Get it, get it, get it. Okay. Name that book. <laughs> she grabbed James by the collar. Would you shut up? Mm. Ooh, that's either betting on love or let's get it on. It's betting on love. Because oh, I feel like Kenya told him to shut up and, and let's get it on too. James <laughs> talked a lot. This, but this the only time I grabbed by his collar. That's why. Because I, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Kenya is uh, she gonna she gonna get a me too charge in a minute. She's just so <laughs> <the> violent. <laughs> I love, I love her though. She's my type of girl. Okay, last one. Name that book. The character name is Maurice Goings. Uh, now that's let's get it on. And yeah. You know what? I got to change my answer to my favorite book because I take oh. it back. Let's oh. get it on. This is my favorite book. I forget. Man, that, I wrote that book during one of the best times of my career when I was covering sports. Oh. <sighs> See, I'm a sports girl too. I'm a, I love sports all day. Yes. 
Yes, I was. I covered uh, the Carolina Panthers for mm-hmm. about five years, and just okay. Let me say mm-hmm. this: being in the locker room is not everything that you expect it to be. I it's a stinky, sweaty, disgusting place. You want to get in and out because a if you got to talk to them after they lose, they not happy <laughs> at all. At all. If you talk to them after they win, they won't shut up. Yeah. It's like, like, but I got to go to the coach's press conference. So can I? Can you just answer these five questions so I can go? And it's only the offensive line that like to walk around naked. And yeah. you just, you just, you just looking straight ahead, looking at head and shoulders because you don't want to see all that. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh, where is Cam? Is he naked? <laughs> We don't want to see. So, Maurice Goins, okay, since so, so she was covering sports, did you kind of like, you know, you know, like write him after a particular athlete, characteristic yeah. wise, or? He was a combination of two people, Keyshawn Johnson and Terrell Owens, because, you know the, what? The- I can see that now. Oh, mm-hmm. I can see that now. Because the wide receiver is the most dependent person on the field, but is also one of the most arrogant players on the field. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to break him all the way down. I had to break him all the way down. And he was broken down. I can see that now. Okay. Hmm. See, you learn something new every day. I was wondering, I'm like, who is who is he? Like, who is he? Who is he? Who is Maurice? I was, you know. (laughs) Who is he? I was trying to figure this thing out, you know? Okay. All right. So now let's talk about your latest novel, Owner of a Broken Heart, The Richardson Sisters. And this is book number one of four, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about the book without giving us a whole spoiler? Because, you know, I'd be, I'd be talking about it. My friends was like, really, Shay, can we read it? I'm like, okay, y'all hurry up. Just, just go. Okay. So... This book um, is about a sports writer, Mm -hmm. Nina Richardson, who's the youngest in her family. I started with the youngest because a lot of times when you read series, they always start with the oldest. And also, I'm the youngest in my family. So I was like, let's let's start with the youngest. Let's start with the baby because they always say the best for last. We're going to put the best first. (laughs) That's a a shout out to my sister and my brother because I'm the favorite. (laughs) I'm the favorite too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. See, that's why we get along. That's why we vibe it. <laughs> but Nina is a, is a freelance sports writer. She wanted to kind of step out of the shadow of her family's huge, you know, shadow in Charleston, South Carolina with their historic bed and breakfast. So she's been covering sports and she's like located in Charlotte. She finds out how easy it is to go viral from a comment at a press conference and her night gets even worse when she finds the guy that she's been dating Mm -hmm. is at their restaurant with a whole nother woman. So devastated, she goes home and she meets Clinton Jefferson, who's a new employee at her father's bed and breakfast. But her sister Alex, the oldest, the mother hen, she does not like Clinton. And she does not like why her sister is at home. So mm-hmm. as Clinton and Nita get to know each other, things start developing between them. And then the whole reason why Alex doesn't trust him comes to light. Yeah. So it's a lot going on in that book um, as far as secrets, you know, um, family struggle, the the interaction between the sisters mm. and a father that holds everything together because when Sheldon Richardson tell his girls to do something, they do it. You tell them to be quiet, they shut up. Immediately. And when he leaves, they start back talking. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. <Yes. laughs> I actually, I love, I actually love this book. Um, so you said you're writing book three now? Yes. Okay. So, how, okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to get the timetables together here. So, well, book one came out in January, right? Yes. Uh-huh. When will book, book two, two be released? Book two will be out in January. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Look, look at me. I'm gonna be like, you, you, you finish, right? We can't just <laughs> <laughs> like how you jump from book one to book three. Wait a minute. So when book two came? <laughs> Right, I'm like, Where, where's book? Did I miss it? Where book two at? Okay, so next, the following January, and then yeah. the following January, the book three will be out. I guess I don't know. How long does it take to publish a book? Depending on what I mean. So when you when you want to finish writing, does it take like a couple more months to publish, or it does? Because oh, okay. you go through you go through an editing process where your editor goes through it. Um, they send it back to you to make changes. Then it goes through copy edits. Then you go through a proof reading. So, and it's all about, you know, you have to meet your deadline. So sometimes, you know, things happen and, you know, sometimes deadlines are missed, but, um, you know, it happens. Sometimes you get stuff back from your publisher late, but you try to stay on schedule because you do want the readers to have the book and you know what I what I've always done like when I get to the editing part that's when I rush through something because mm-hmm. you know the writing process you really can't rush it like right. Right. you know because I've started book three over like four times because I just did not like the way it was going even though I did plot it out but I'm like I don't like this and I didn't think my characters liked it so but when I get my copy edits I would just focus on that I don't do any, I, I would like disconnect from social media and everything so I can focus on right. that and get it back because I don't want to have the book pushed back because you're already telling everybody this out. You have excited people that are ready to read it and you yes, want to get are. it out to them. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm like, you see, I'm like, where's the book? So did I miss something? <laughs> we are excited about it. Well, I, you know, and I, I see now why the characters we I for myself, just speaking about me, I can relate more to your characters because you take your time to develop them. And I think that's just awesome. You're not just like, okay, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And it's like half ass, because I've read some half ass books and I'm like, something happened. So I had to go back and like, did I miss a page? Cause I'm some <laughs> I missed something. So I really appreciate that in your writing. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. And I, and I think one of the reasons why I, I try to develop my characters as much as possible is because, like, my favorite writers do that, too. Like, you know, Beverly Jenkins is one of my favorites. Brenda Jackson, you know, they develop characters and you are so invested in them that you want to know what happens. And, you know, I, I will never forget, I went home with Topaz to read uh, myself, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I I sat my book on the table and my dad picked it up and I have not gotten my book back since and and I will go home and he will talk about it. Tell me, you got any more of them cowboy books that lady wrote? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I sent him the Taming of Jesse Rose. Because okay. that's like one of my favorite books. And he was like, the print's too small. So I gotta get him the, the big print. The big print. Of the book. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, we'll get you the big print. That's that's what we got to do so you can keep reading your cowboy books and I don't have to watch these black and white movies on y'all TV. I will do that. <laughs> like, you know, the house where y'all pay the bills. <laughs> exactly. I know. When I go see my grandfather, it's Josie Wells all day, baby. I'm like, granddad, we, oh we did this already. Can we go watch something else? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I love Man. all. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So another segment, um, in the Brown Book series is called Who'd You Rather? Okay. Yes. Well, we take <laughs> well, we take some of the, you know, the hero hero the heroes from your books, and you got to let me know who'd you rather and okay. why. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You know, since we were just talking about um um your your new book that just came out, so we're gonna the first one will be Who'd You Rather. Clinton Jefferson or Darius McRae? Oh my God. Oh, this is so unfair. I know. It, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to go with Darius because Darius is going to cut my grass as well as smack me on my booty. 
Girl, yes. Okay, okay. So we're gonna go with Derek. Okay. All right. Who'd you rather? Jamal Carver or Jackson Franklin? Girl. I'm gonna go with Jamal because the Marines are the first line of defense. Right. And uh I got a thing for Marines. Ooh, no do I? <laughs> I went with Jamal too, maybe because I'm from Atlanta. So I was okay. like, yeah, ATL, ATL, ATL girl. Yeah. Listen, people are people, when people talk to me, they're like, oh my God, I love your accent. I'm like, girl, I'm country. I'm from this is not an accent. Like, <laughs> like right. this is how I talk. You have an accent. Right. <laughs> I'm offended. Like, <laughs> Okay, yeah, that was a little difficult. Well, it was hard for me to when I when I did the Who'd You Rather because I was like, oh my God, Jamal, yeah, I like the whole Atlanta thing, but that Jackson Franklin, that he he was just so honest, you know. He yeah. was just so he was he is like if Superman was black, yes. he would be Jackson Franklin. Definitely. That's what I thought about when I was writing him, and it was like he he was he was honest. He was sexy. He was a really, really good guy. And I think he needed Liza in his life to just shake things up because he was he was he was truth justice in the African American way. He sure was. I loved him. I love he reminded me so much of our original Westmoreland from his Brenda Jackson books. You know, I love the whole senators and all that, the politician part of it. So I thought that was cool. Okay. Who'd you rather? <laughs> Malik Green or Chef Devon Harris. Hmm. Man, well, I have the palate of a toddler, so I'm gonna have to go with Malik. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Malik because see, Devin gonna be want me to taste food that I don't like, and I can't do that. Okay. Like, oh, taste, taste this goose liver pate. I can't do that. It's like, ooh, can you make me some chicken tenders? <laughs> I absolutely love it. Okay, so Devin, you're out of there. Sorry, sir. Hmm. And Malik, he was in uh, Revelations too. This is your first yeah. book, so of course yeah. you know. I was thinking, kind of nostalgia, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Now, another segment. All right. A lot of segments in this. Because I, I, my, um, our fan base, we love to just know about the author. Like, you know, we love your books. We get it. But like, what y'all doing? Like, hey, girl, hey, what's up with you? We want to know. Right? All right. Dead or alive. <laughs> if you were hosting a dinner party and could invite and could if, invite five people from any era, who would it be? Okay. So okay. Zora Neale Hurston, because Zora Neale Hurston is one of the reasons why I write. I read their eyes for watching God. Yeah. I read it because I saw it on the Cosby show. We had to pick books to do for our AP English class to do a report on. And my teacher was like, I don't think you're going to understand the themes in their eyes for watching God. So that was a challenge. Okay. And I took that book. I actually bought the book. I highlighted like half of the book the first time I read it looked up what all the themes and stuff meant and got an A on that paper. And she yeah. never questioned me again. So I read that, I reread that book every year just because it's amazing. Okay. Um, of course, I would have to invite Miss Bev. So Miss <laughs> Beverly Jenkins and Miss Brenda Jackson, because I, I need to hang out with the two BJs. Girl. Yeah. Um, and you know. Two of the men that have inspired characters in my books since I've been writing, uh, Denzel Washington and Ooh. Chadwick Boseman. Okay, okay, I'm coming yes. to that dinner party too, girl. You got, <laughs> All I, the, you got the two BJs and Denzel. I'm there. Yep. I got to do it. Can we eat chicken tenders? Because you know, <laughs> <I, laughs> they're gonna be hilarious. I absolutely love it. Okay, so before we um, wind down this interview, I have to talk about Simply Sharice. 
you know, you know, we uh, unless we've been living under a rock, we this world yeah. has been kind of crazy here lately. This whole year has just been a shit show. Um, one of my friends, he's a, he's a comedian, um, comedian laugh love, and he was like, you know what? What if Kobe was the glue that held the world together? Because ever since Kobe passed, it seems like I said, you know what? You're joking, but it, this world, this whole year has just been crazy. It's just been crazy. I want to cancel my um my free subscription to 2020 and go back to what I had before. I want to go back to the old plan because yeah. this ain't what we want it. Yeah, this is this is not working. And I was reading your um your blog for Simply Sharice. Can you tell us a little bit about your blog and the the, the uh, different things that you cover, different events and, and uh, social I, injustices? I started my blog as just a place to vent that wasn't social media, and also as you know, a place where I could do. My first love is always going to be journalism. Mm -hmm. So when I write a blog, I try to make it factual. I don't just like just spout just a whole bunch of opinions all the time. But if I do talk, if it's an opinion piece, it's usually something that I'm going to back up with some facts. Uh, just recently, like I said, I live in Charlotte. <clears throat> you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now we have um, the protests surrounding, you know, the murders of Black people, Black men and women. Yeah. Um, Breonna Taylor, say her name. We're not saying it enough. Right. Um, and Charlotte, you would think, would be, you know, different. We have a black mayor. We have a black police chief. We have a black sheriff. We have a black fire chief. You know, um, I know Atlanta has been called Wakanda. Yes. Um, but Charlotte, you know, had the power structure to actually look like it. Yeah. Now, let me say this. The only black politician in Charlotte I trust right now is the sheriff. Okay. He's the only person that's actually leading from the front, doing what he promised to do when he was elected. Now, I recently wrote about our mayor because during the pandemic, nobody heard from her. And, you know, all of the other, like, you know, black women mayors around the country, right. you know, they were coming out because, you know, most of them got, like, crazy governors, like, sorry, Georgia that dude opening up the state like super early. You got a CDC right down the street from your office. You didn't know this was real. Okay, whatever, right. sir. Right. But it's like our mayor just like disappeared. Like, ma'am, you're not even going to come out and just like, come on, put your arms around the city and tell us to stay in the house? I just, but I then, throw them. nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing. So when the protests started in Charlotte, like the first night that they started, it started on Beatty's Ford Road, which I went to Johnson C. Smith. Beatty's Ford Road is, um, you know, where Smith is located. That's like a piece of my heart. Started down there, but it was away from the university. There was property damage. And all of a sudden, now here she comes. So I wrote an open letter to her. And I was like, I was like, you I was like, hey, girl, where you been? <laughs> like, what? And <laughs> I had no idea that it was going to take off the way it did. I was like, mm -hmm. man, like it got almost. 10,000 views. I've never had a post to go 10,000 views. I was like, oh my gosh. I her, her PR people actually want me to take a meeting with her and I need to respond to the email. I will do it under the condition that, you know, we can talk about things live or, you know, we I can let my readers know what was said because we're not friends to where I need to sit down and just have a random conversation with you. You're not invited to my dinner party, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. Like you can't come and eat chicken tenders with Chadwick and Denzel and Miss Beverly and Miss Brenda okay. and Zora Neale Hurston. <laughs> so, amidst all of that, then our police department basically gassed a group of protesters in Uptown Charlotte. I saw that. And the police chief was like, "Well, I don't know who gave the order." Really. You lead the department and you don't know who's doing stuff. So it's like, it's stuff like that, that just, I got to speak out about and I want to do it in a long form and I want it to be coherent. And I know if I write a blog about it, I'm yeah. going to have to make it coherent. Cause if I go on Facebook, then I'm yelling and cussing. Yeah. And 
I got a Facebook um, snitch that be telling my mama what I write. And I'm like, you know, I'm kind of old, but she do call me. And then she's like, I'm not going to cook you no macaroni and cheese. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll do right. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I love it. That is funny. Okay. So, you know what? That being said, I actually, I, I, I look forward to your blogs. I really do. Because I'm like, oh. yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, her blog. Well, now that you said, I, I read that you were a journalist, it, it, you know, you started out being a journalist, so I, I get it. But I was like, her blogs is is as in depth as her romance writing. Like, is, you know, reading your stuff. I think I did read a piece about the sheriff. And I was like, I, I actually felt like I was in Charlotte. Like, I, yeah, I felt like I was sitting down and looking at a conversation that was happening between you and him. It, wow. it was just that ends up, and I, I loved. I was like, "Yo, this girl can write uh, on Sesame Street," and I'd be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Thank you so much. Yeah, I absolutely love you. Okay, so this leads us to our last question of the interview, and I just before I ask this last question, I just want to say thank you so much. You know, we here at Brown Book Series, we absolutely love you. We appreciate you for taking our call. It's like, you know, oh listen, girl, call anytime. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I have really enjoyed it. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. And everyone, please go out and get the book owner of a broken heart um it's an amazon right amazon yes. where where can it can they go to your website and get the book as well um you can go to my amazon uh, you go to my website there are links to there are buy links on my website it's everywhere books are sold it's everywhere so it was like you know i, I don't know if uh Barnes and noble is open up again but i know before the pandemic i went into Barnes and Nobles, where I hadn't seen my books in years, and my book was everywhere, and I was so happy. And then Corona came. I was like, man, why you got to do this? That, that, that means when Barnes and Noble open back up, it's just your book's going to be still out everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to walk in like, oh, they everywhere. Oh, my God, this is awesome. Okay, so our last question of the interview. Hmm. If you were writing a book about your life, what would the title be? Mm. Girl, you can't say that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be. Girl, you can't say that. I love because, it. Because just like my daddy, I will say anything that comes to my mind. Uh, and, just, and just like my daddy, I will back it up. But uh, like my daddy used to be, I heard people feelings. And like my daddy used to be, I don't care half of the time. <laughs> I, I need to work on that. <laughs> okay, okay, I love it. Girl, you can't say that. I love it. Thank you so much, Miss Sharice. We love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much. Everyone, please, yes, go check out Miss Sharice Elf. Don't forget the Elf baby. <laughs> With her latest book from the Richardson Sisters series, Owner of a Broken Heart. Thank you so much, Miss Therese. Thank you.